October 14th, Memorial of St. Callistus I, Pope and Martyr. St. Callistus is reputed to have been a slave. Once he obtained his liberty, he was ordained a deacon by Pope Zephyrinus and succeeded him in the chair of St. Peter. He fought against the adoption and modalist heretics. He was crowned with martyrdom in 222 and was buried on the Aurelian Way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Faith of our fathers, faith and prayer shall win all nations unto thee. And through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will love both friend and foe in all our strife, and preach thee too as love knows how, by kindly deeds and virtuous life. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Men will hate you because you are mine, but he who perseveres will be saved. Why this tumult among nations, among peoples, this useless murmuring? They arise, the kings of the earth. Princes plot against the Lord and his anointed. Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask, and I shall bequeath you the nations. Put the ends of the earth in your possession. With the rod of iron you will break them, shatter them like a potter's jar. Now, O kings, understand. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe and trembling. Pay him your homage, lest he be angry and you perish, for suddenly his anger will blaze. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Men will hate you because you are mine, but he who perseveres will be saved. The sufferings of this life cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in the life to come. In the Lord I have taken my refuge. How can you say to my soul, fly like a bird to its mountain? See the wicked bracing their bow. They are fixing their arrows on the string to shoot upright men in the dark. Foundations once destroyed, what can the just do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord whose throne is in heaven. His eyes look down on the world, his gaze tests mortal men. The Lord tests the just and the wicked, the lover of violence he hates. He sends fire and brimstone on the wicked, he sends a scorching wind as their lot. The Lord is just and loves justice, the upright shall see his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The sufferings of this life cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in the life to come. The Lord tested his chosen ones as gold tested by fire. He has received them forever as a sacrificial offering. Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. From you may my judgment come forth. Your eyes discern the truth. You search my heart, you visit me by night, you test me and you find in me no wrong. My words are not sinful as are men's words. I kept from violence because of your word, I kept my feet firmly in your paths. There was no faltering in my steps. I am here and I call, you will hear me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Display your great love, you whose right hand saves your friends from those who rebel against them. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the violent attack of the wicked. My foes encircle me with deadly intent. Their hearts tight shut, their mouths speak proudly. They advance against me, and now they surround me. Their eyes are watching to strike me to the ground as though they were lions ready to claw, or like some young lion crouched in hiding. Lord, arise, confront them, strike them down. Let your sword rescue my soul from the wicked. Let your hand, O Lord, rescue me from men. From men whose reward is in this present life. 
you give them their fill of your treasures. They rejoice in abundance of offspring and leave their wealth to their children. As for me, in my justice I shall see your face and be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord tested his chosen ones as gold tested by fire. He has received them forever as a sacrificial offering. I have known tribulations and distress, but in your commands I have found consolation. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Malachi. An oracle. The word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, How have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, but hated Esau. I made his mountains a waste, his heritage a desert for jackals. If Edom says, We have been crushed, but we will rebuild the ruins, thus says the Lord of hosts, They indeed may rebuild, but I will tear down, and they shall be called the land of guilt, the people with whom the Lord is angry forever. Your own eyes shall see it, and you will say, Great is the Lord even beyond the land of Israel. A son honors his father, and a servant fears his master. If then I am a father, where is the honor due to me? And if I am a master, where is the reverence due to me? So says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who despise his name. But you ask, How have we despised your name? By offering polluted food on my altar. Then you ask, How have we polluted it? By saying the table of the Lord may be slighted. When you offer a blind animal for sacrifice, is this not evil? When you offer the lame or the sick, is it not evil? Present it to your governor, see if he will accept it, or welcome you, says the Lord of hosts. So now, if you implore God for mercy on us, when you have done the like, will he welcome any of you, says the Lord of hosts? Oh, that one among you would shut the temple gates to keep you from kindling fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept any sacrifice from your hands. For from the rising of the sun even to its setting, my name is great among the nations. And everywhere they bring sacrifice to my name, and a pure offering. For great is my name among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you behave profanely toward me by thinking the Lord's table and its offering may be polluted and its food slighted. You also say, What a burden! And you scorn it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring in what you seize, or the lame, or the sick. Yes, you bring it as a sacrifice. Shall I accept it from your hands, says the Lord? Cursed is the deceiver who has in his flock a male, but under his vow sacrifices to the Lord a gelding. For a great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. This also you do. The altar of the Lord you cover with tears, weeping and groaning, because he no longer regards your sacrifice, nor accepts it favorably from your hand. And you say, Why is it? Because the Lord is witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have broken faith, though she is your companion, your betrothed wife. Did he not make one being with flesh and spirit? And what does that one require but godly offspring? You must then safeguard life that is your own, and not break faith with the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel, and covering one's garment with injustice, says the Lord of hosts. You must then safeguard life that is your own, and not break faith. I made a covenant with Levi the priest, In it I promised him life and peace. I filled him with fear, and he revered me. His teaching was true, and no dishonesty fell from his lips. The Lord has sworn an oath which he will not regret. You are a priest forever in the light of Melchizedek. His teaching was true, and no dishonesty fell from his lips. A reading from a treatise to Fortunatus by St. Cyprian, Bishop and Martyr. The sufferings of this present time are not to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Who would not strive wholeheartedly to attain such glory? To become a friend of God and straightway rejoice with Christ, receiving heavenly rewards after earth's torment and suffering. 
Soldiers of this world take pride in returning to their home country in triumph after they have defeated the enemy. How much greater is the glory in returning triumphantly to heaven after conquering the devil? The bold deceiver is laid low. The trophies of victory are restored to the place from which Adam was cast out for his sin. We offer to the Lord a most acceptable gift, our incorrupt faith, the unshaken courage of our spirit and the glorious pride of our dedication. We accompany him when he comes to take vengeance on his enemies, sitting at his side at the judgment seat, sharing in Christ's inheritance. We are on an equal footing with the angels and enjoy the possession of a heavenly kingdom together with the patriarchs, apostles, and prophets. What persecution can defeat such thoughts? What torture overwhelm them? The spirit of a strong and stable character, strengthened by meditation, endures. This unshaken spirit, which is strengthened by a certain and solid faith in the future, will be enlivened against all the terrors of the devil and threats of this world. During persecution the earth is closed off from us, but heaven lies open. The Antichrist threatens, but Christ protects us. Death is brought on, but eternal life follows. What an honor, what happiness to depart joyfully from this world, to go forth in glory from the anguish and pain, in one moment to close the eyes that looked on the world of men, and in the next to, to open them at once to look on God and Christ. The speed of this joyous departure, you are suddenly withdrawn from earth and find yourself in the kingdom of heaven. These are the thoughts you must grasp with your heart and mind and reflect on day and night. If persecution should overtake such a soldier of God, it will not overcome one so virtuously prepared for battle. Even if our summons should come sooner, our faith which was prepared for the witness of martyrdom will not go unrewarded. For we would immediately receive our reward by God's judgment. In time of persecution, the battle wins the crown, but in peace it is the testimony of a good conscience. You must have at heart every member of the flock, for the Holy Spirit has made you their shepherds. You must rule over the church of God, which he made his own through the blood of his Son. The great quality of a steward is to be faithful to his duty. You must rule over the church of God, which he made his own through the blood of his Son. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear the prayers of your people that we may be helped by St. Callistus, whose martyrdom we celebrate with joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks.